Hello, and welcome back to Wellness Wednesday, a monthly series where experts share practical tips and techniques on topics important to patients, survivors, and caretakers alike. I'm Erin Kuhn Krieger from Ralph Pancreatic Cancer Foundation, and I'm so happy to be back here moderating tonight's session where we'll be talking about all things DASH for detection. We have a lot in store for you today, so let's jump on in. And remember, if you do have any questions throughout, you could always put them in the chats or comments below or email them to us at info at ralphfoundation.org. Okay, so I'm so excited. Dash for Detection is just three sleeps away. That's right, it's this Saturday, June 11th. Our community will be coming back together at Montrose Harbor in Chicago for a 5K run or walk. It's the first in-person Dash since 2019, and it's my first Dash ever. Uh, in person. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm participating in honor of my friend, Aaron Cowell, who was taken away from us way too soon. And for all of the families that I've had the chance to talk with over these years, and for the hope that one day we just don't have to dash. If you haven't registered yet, there's still time. In fact, you could actually register the day of but I don't think you want to deal with that stress. So why don't you click on the link that's in the chat and, uh, few clicks in, it'll get you all set and on track, and it goes a long way in supporting Ralph's efforts for early detection research and patient support. Excuse me, patient support. Tonight, I have several great conversations in store for you. I'm honored to chat with Zoe Kofkin, who will be dashing with Sandy Squad in honor of her mom. Sandy Squad has consistently been one of our largest teams, even figuring out how to creatively uh, dash safely during the pandemic. I also had the chance to catch up with Stacia Hart and Rachel Scheinkopf, Ralph's executive director and board of directors president, to talk about Ralph's role in, in personally guiding patients and families through diagnosis to treatment and, and everyday life, to groundbreaking, uh, excuse me, groundbreaking updates on Ralph-funded research. Talk, we talked about why dashing matters to them and where all of the donations and the impact of the donations and support goes. And then their tips on how to make the most of your DASH experience. Full disclosure, it's a taped interview. Since Stacia and Rachel and the entire Ralph team are focused on this weekend's preparations and logistics. Finally, I'll be sharing special warm-up tips from our partners at Shred 415. Not only will they show us the right moves tonight, but they'll actually be on site to help us warm up Saturday morning with a live session. And I think they have a few special offers for everyone as well. So to kick things off, I'd like to introduce Zoe Kofkin from Sandy Squad, whose team of over 100 people have consistently brought in an incredible amount of support and donations over the years. Welcome, Zoe. Hi. So glad to be here. Uh, first and foremost, I'm, I'm always so, so torn in, in these conversations because I, I love that I get to meet people and I, I hate why we're meeting. Um, so I, I'm so sorry for the loss of your mom. Um, and Thank I was you. hoping that I was hoping that you could tell me about her. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm happy to share. Uh, my mom, Sandy, she had bright red hair, um, even brighter than mine and my siblings, um, but it matched her bright and fun personality. Uh, she was the queen of connections, as everybody always said, like anywhere she went, um, she'd meet someone and would happen to find out that they were connected to, you know, her friends, sisters, husbands, cousin. It always turned out to be kind of a lengthy uh, description of how they were related. And she just asked people questions about themselves, truly cared to get to know them. Um, she was also just so supportive of the things, you know, we were passionate about her kids, um, my siblings, and always wanted to know the scoop as she called it. Um, so making sure she knew what we were up to. And she was bright, she was fun. You know, she always threw in a pun when she had the opportunity. Uh, most importantly though, she, you know, was always very family oriented and, um, you know, always wanted us to be close with our siblings and with our cousins, which we are. And, and she instilled those values in us, you know, for our future families. So everyone that knew her remembers her as a bright light and a loving and caring person. And we miss her very much. I'm sure she sounds like an incredible lady, mom, friend, aunt, um, and, and what a beautiful way to honor her and, and honor her legacy. So tell me, how did Sandy Squad come about and, and who are all these folks that you're able to pull together? Yeah, well, that starts actually with how I heard about the Rolf Foundation in the first place. 
Uh, my involvement with the foundation started after my mom was diagnosed, so with pancreatic cancer, and that happened in uh, March of 2019. And, you know, as horrible as that diagnosis was for me and my family to accept, um, my mom tried as hard as she could to, you know, push the fears aside and shifted her focus to conquering the disease and, you know, the complicated road that was in front of her. Um, and unfortunately, as people hear about too often, you know, with Aaron and and most of the other stories, you know, she lost her battle in September, which was only six months after her diagnosis. So during her fight, during those six months, we heard about the foundation through my aunt, my mom's sister, Debbie, um, and about the dash for detection. And we signed up our family, reached out to our family and friends because they all knew my mom. There was just this outpouring of support. Um, and, you know, on our team, Sandy Squad in 2019, like you mentioned, you know, we had over 100 people join. And consistently each year, you know, some of those same participants have, have joined each year. So that date, you know, that dash that day gave her so much energy and like a newfound strength because of how much support she felt and actually saw in person that day. So it's, it's safe to say that dash is vital to you and your family. Can you share yeah. some, some more details? Why? Yeah. Being at the dash in person in 2019 just showed the importance of events like this. It, it really lifts the spirits and motivates the fighters of the disease. You're surrounded by people who really understand and care, like the, you know, Stacia, Rachel, Katie, everybody who's involved in making this event so special, truly care about everybody that they cross paths with. And so, um, you know, it'll, it'll also definitely be difficult to be in person without my mom this year, but it meant so much to my family and to see how rejuvenated she was that day was a gift that we'll remember each year. Wonderful gift to have. During these past two years with the pandemic where we had to dash virtually, you and your team still found creative ways to get together, to participate or, or participate uh, virtually. And this year we still have many folks who aren't able to get to Montrose Harbor or aren't comfortable being there and will be dashing at a distance. So what ideas and advice can you offer to them? Yeah, I mean, there are many ways to get involved virtually. My twin sister, for example, lives in New York. And so over the last two years, when it was fully virtual, we encouraged our family and friends, wherever they were, to do any activity, whether it was biking or running or walking, yoga, really anything that they can think of that's active and have them send us pictures in their dash apparel. So our motivation was making it a time to spend together, which has been, you know, had been so hard the past couple of years. And during that time, you know, remembering my mom and reminiscing on the great memories we have. So that's one thing I'm definitely looking forward to is, you know, to have that energy with more people coming together in person, but even virtually, we still, you know, felt the love the past couple of years, you know, that people have for my mom and will continue to and having a day to remember that feeling, you know, from the walk in 2019, which is very special. Sounds it. With such a large team that's participating both in person and virtually, how are you keeping everyone motivated and excited? Yeah, I mean, I think the motivation part for me is really based on spreading awareness, which is actually more beneficial having this virtual component to it. Um, we encourage people, even if they can't come in person to go to a local park or their favorite workout class, favorite anything. And the fact that it's inspired by the dash is what matters. And so if you go to a class or a park where the dash isn't formally planned, it even spreads more awareness, uh, you know, for people who see your shirt or post on social media to get the message across that, you know, people can still make an impact, even if they can't be at the event. Um, so I also have them, you know, share pictures with me like we've done in the past few years, and I'll compile them and share them throughout the day. Um, but really, overall, it's about togetherness and being with those, you know, who, who lo you love and appreciating that time together while remembering those that we've lost and inspiring those who are fighting and raising awareness for the cause. We greatly appreciate all of your support and, and the path that you've been on and your family has been on has, has not been an easy one. Um, and, you know, I think one of the best parts of Rolf community is the community piece of it, uh, that people are going through this and, and nobody is going through it alone. What advice, what would you say to others who are walking similar paths to, to what you and your family have walked? Yeah, I mean, I, it can definitely feel scary and unknown, um, really. But the, ma the main thing that's consistently helped is just having your support system around. So friends, family, loved ones. And that's what makes the Dash so special, too, is it, it brings everyone's loved ones together for a common goal. 
So um, I would say just, you know, lean on those around you and, and have, get that support from them. Well, thank you, Zoe. So appreciate you coming on tonight, taking the time to share Sandy's stories with us. I'm sure your mom is, is beaming with pride watching all of your efforts and is going to have a strong presence with us all on Saturday. I look forward yeah. to meeting you in person on Saturday. And yeah, and seeing absolutely. The team. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you then. See you soon. Now I'm excited to share my conversation with Stacia and Rachel. Let's go to video. Well, hello, Stacia and Rachel. I'm so excited to be talking with you both today. Hey, Erin. So let's start with you, Rachel. Uh, why don't you tell me what you're most excited for about Dash this weekend? Well, I'm just excited that we're all going to be together. There's nothing like the energy of being in person. And I haven't seen a lot of these people since 2018. So I'm going to get there extra early just so I can try and see as many people as I can. And I just want to remind everyone, Erin, I hope it's okay that I say this, that if you cannot make it to Montrose Harbor, you can always dash virtually. And we would love to see your pictures on social media. Hashtag dash for detection. That's right. How about you, Stacia? You know, it's one of my favorite events of the year for Rolf. You're bringing together a community of all ages that has been affected by this horrific disease, but it's an uplifting moment to celebrate and honor our loved ones. And it's very emotional, but powerful. Absolutely. It's going to be my first one on site. Uh, and I have felt that power these past couple of years with the with the virtual event. So I could only imagine what it's going to be like to see everybody in person and, and gather everyone. So now let's switch over to where funding goes. How does Ralph choose which grants to fund? I can start, Erin, because that is a really important question. We've built really strong relationships with doctors that are respected and well known in the industry. One example is Dr. Ralph Ruban from Johns Hopkins. These professors and doctors guide us through the process. And we also, for our vetting process on what research we choose, the Lust Garden Foundation is our partner, and their vetting process is above anybody else that we can imagine. And we're so happy to work with them. And it's also important to mention that we don't seek grants that have already gone to the National Cancer Institute for federal funding. We seek the brilliant new upcoming researcher that's thinking outside the box, that has fresh minds, fresh ideas, and they need our dollars to make it to the next level for federal funding. So we feel that we've really done some groundbreaking help with these young and exciting researchers. And an excellent example of this is Dr. Laura Woods at Johns Hopkins. Uh, we started supporting her in the beginning of 2016 and we funded a living biobank of human pancreatic organoids. This is a three-dimensional culture system. We also funded Dr. Nicholas Roberts' work at Johns Hopkins on targeting oxidative stress in pancreatic cancer and continued research into important genetic variants, both of whom recently sent us updates. Hello, my name is Dr. Laura Wood. I'm an Associate Professor of Pathology and Oncology at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. I'm a gastrointestinal pathologist and pancreatic cancer researcher, and I lead my own pancreatic cancer research laboratory um, here at Hopkins. I'm proud to have been supported by the Rolf Foundation um, since the beginning of my uh, faculty position, this foundation has supported a lot of our really innovative um, early ideas in pancreatic cancer research, in particular focusing on pre-malignant tumorigenesis and early detection. Um, for several years now, they've supported a um, living biobank of human precancerous samples that we can use to do experiments to better understand what happens in the pancreas before it turns into cancer and then transform the, these ideas to new approaches to early detection. Hi, I'm Nick Roberts, an assistant professor and pancreatic cancer researcher in the Department of Pathology at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. My research is focused on understanding the causes of inherited pancreatic cancer. In essence, we're trying to find out why some people have a high risk of developing the disease. 
One potential reason is that a patient has inherited a gene that increased their risk of developing pancreatic cancer. We're conducting research on two of these genes. One is called ATM and the other is called CDKM2A. Our work on ATM aims to understand how exactly it causes pancreatic cancer, while our work on CDKM2A aims to determine which variants of its gene are associated with an increased risk of developing pancreatic cancer. The knowledge gained from this research is really very important. For example, our research may help identify high-risk individuals who would benefit from regular screening to help detect pancreatic cancers early. And in future, our work may also help develop improved treatments for patients living with pancreatic cancer. This work would not be possible without the generous support of the Rolf Pancreatic Cancer Foundation, and I'm sure that we will continue to make progress in our fight against pancreatic cancer and have a positive impact on the lives of patients and their families. Thank you. That's incredible because as we always say, the best uh, way to catch it is, is through these early detection tests. So it's great mm -hmm. to see that things are, are moving forward. And I remember during this past uh, December Wellness Wednesday, we learned about the advancements for, that the University of Chicago is making. And I think we've got a clip that we'd like to show here now. So first of all, I want to thank the Rolf Foundation for supporting our research this past year. Um, the work I'm going to talk about this evening um, relates to a very specific aspect of pancreatic cancer called cancer cachexia. Um, what is cancer cachexia? And I apologize for this graphic image. It is the progressive weight loss that uh, cancer patients experience. Um, it affects many cancers, uh, including pancreatic cancer. But as I'll come on to discuss, it's particularly prevalent in pancreatic cancer and is one of the causes of patient mortality. It essentially involves the loss of skeletal muscle mass, um, also not always, but sometimes loss of fat mass as well. Uh, critically, it, it is not reversed by increasing uh, food intake or altered nutrition. Um, and the reason that there's a lot of focus on it uh, as in terms of understanding how to uh, limit mortality from pancreatic cancer, it's important because it affects how the patient responds to cancer therapy and the, the effective dose of therapy that patients can receive. So as I mentioned, it is a feature of pancreatic cancer. It, in fact, pancreatic cancer is the type of cancer most linked to cancer cachexia, to muscle wasting. 85% of all pancreatic cancer patients present with cachexia. And unlike other cancers where this is generally a, a feature of late stage disease, with pancreatic cancer, um, over 50% of patients who present with early stage or earlier stage and locally advanced cancer already exhibit cachexia. So it starts earlier in pancreatic cancer than it does for other cancers. I'll stop, um, but it's now my pleasure to introduce my colleagues at the University of Chicago, uh, Dr. Xuan Hu and uh, Dr. Mark Bissonnette in the Department of Medicine. Thank you all. I don't know if you can hear me or not. <laughs> um, I, I'm a gastroenterologist at the University of Chicago and very interested in pancreatic cancer and colon cancer. And I've been grateful for the Rolf, Rolf Foundation and for an opportunity to, uh, to discuss this with you. So briefly, I'm going to tell you about our research that, uh, that I've been doing in collaboration with Dr. Xuan He to make a diagnostic test to diagnose pancreatic cancer at earlier stages and potentially even pre-malignant pancreatic lesions uh, and to distinguish those that are more likely to go on to cancer uh, versus those that are, are less, less likely to do that. Um, so as, as many of you know, pancreatic cancers are an increasingly serious problem in the United States. They're, they're thought to be perhaps the most serious malignancy to, as a cause of death in the next 30 years. And so it's a rising incidence and it's a serious problem. Uh, there are several pre-malignant precursors of pancreatic cancer, including the uh, pancreatic inter intraepithelial neoplasms or PANNs and the uh, interpancreatic uh, mucinous uh, producing lesions, the uh, MCNs and the IPMNs. Uh, these lesions are thought to progress over time and uh, we're interested in developing a blood test that would differentiate pancreatic 
cancers from normal, normal or at least non-malignant lesions, and eventually to be able to detect pre-malignant lesions as well. Okay, that was incredible to, to see, and you can watch the entire clip um, and th of the recording uh, through the link that we're putting in the chat. Are there other projects that we've funded um, that make it through to FDA funding? Yes, we actually have two really good examples um, that have just been funded over the past couple of years. One is uh, called Cancer Seek, which I'm sure many of you have heard us talk about. It's an early detection blood test that's now actually being commercialized. We began funding that almost six years ago in the very early stages. And so we're really excited to see um, how that all comes together. The second is called the, Ge the GENERATE, which stands for Genetic Education Risk Assessment and Testing. Um, this improves cancer genetic testing and cancer prevention in family members of pancreatic cancer. So that's another really important one in order to be followed if your loved ones have pancreatic cancer and it's in the family. We also founded the Early Detection Test, uh, the risk assessment tool used for NYU through Dr. Diane Simeone's project pre -C. If you're interested in learning if you are at risk at all for pancreatic cancer, feel free to visit what we funded and we're really excited about proceedstudy.org. And maybe we can put a link up there, Erin, for everyone to see. Of yeah, course. and this research project's going on, I believe it's a 10 year project. So we didn't fund the project, but we funded the tool. And there's 15 hospitals, institutions throughout the country that are working on this, including University of Chicago, which is local for us. So they're a great place to start too. So you just let us know and we're happy to help. That's that's incredible and sounds quite hopeful, which is which is wonderful in this arena. You know, in these past few years that I've been working with the two of you and the whole organization, I've personally seen the the personal touch and the hand on the back, the hand holding that you <clears throat> that you give. Why why should people choose Rolf when considering making donations? I can start. Um, our local community is the core of who we are, and it's why we make a difference with each person we connect with. We all fight for early detection. We all fight for patient support because we've been through it. Stacia, unfortunately, lost her mom to pancreatic cancer at a very young age. I lost my mom to pancreatic cancer. So we get it. We understand we've been in your boots. And I think that that has helped tremendously for patients because they feel that they can trust our, our feelings because we've been there. Absolutely. And I mean, awareness is so important. I can't tell you how many times I hear a family say, I can't believe this is happening to me, you know, or my loved one, how is this possible? And we just don't want anyone to go through that heartache. So while we're continuing to work on funding these early detection screenings and treatments, we need to get the word out there so people can prepare ahead of time so they're not diagnosed at stage four. You know, we hold their hand and we never let go. And it's truly an extended family. So what if somebody calls that doesn't have pancreatic cancer themselves, um, but they're concerned because another family member, a loved one, a friend, um, they have it? That's a great question. And we offer so many um, different types of supports. When a family member calls, there's an array of an emotion, emotions happening. What do you expect? What to do next? Um, how do you care or comfort that loved one that was just diagnosed? And we'll help them discuss ideas of what other medical specialists have recommended to us as pre-care, whether it's nutrition or diet or counseling, um, anxiety, depression, all that they should connect with their doctor and discuss as, you know, just supporting in addition to the treatment that they're getting. You know, typically a family member is not thinking about themselves during this time because they're in total go mode that, you know, they just have to act immediately. So we do discuss with them how important it is for them to take care of themselves. And we have an amazing connection with Cancer Wellness Center. Uh, they offer both in-person and virtual patient uh, and family support services, one-on-one um, -on -one and group counseling. And it's just, they're, they're truly an incredible foundation and it's a free service. Um, for those that are concerned with their future, depending on you know, the loved one's diagnosis, we do recommend that they seek genetic counselors. And we have counselors that 
um, you know, we feel really good about that we can refer them to and help them alleviate some of that stress, knowing the next steps for themselves and their family. Station, I feel really passionate about patient support. And I, po I spoke with a patient recently and she could not believe that we gave our cell phone numbers to her. And Station, I said, call us anytime, day or night, we are here for you. And she said to me, and I called Stacia later to tell her that by us just offering that, she felt like it restored her faith in humanity. So if that doesn't keep us wanting to help, I don't know what else does. Definitely. And, and I wanted to point out on our website, we tried to break down these steps um, as, as simple as possible, knowing that when you come to our website, you might not be in, in the state of mind to, to get through it. So that's why between the website and the two of you and the rest of the organization, but we also have a great tool on there, um, a risk assessment tool. So if you go to know, knowmyrisk.org, um, then uh, which we'll put in the chat, you can fill out the, the sheet and, and at least give yourself some um, ideas and thoughts about some next steps. All right, so let's switch back to Dash. Um, what should we expect when we get there on, on site? For those of us coming on site. Station it's day. fun. It's fun. There's a lot of purple and uh, a lot of excited emotions, people together with families, maybe that are in friends that maybe they haven't seen since the pandemic. Um, you've got the beautiful lake that you're looking at. Uh, so the first part is just everyone kind of coming together and sticking around and being with their teams and hanging out. And then there will be um, a few presentations and we'll do a warm up by shred and then we'll uh, kick it off. And so it will be runners first and then walkers. You can be with your team. You can be on your own. It is timed. So for those that are interested, um, they'll be able to see where they're at at the end. And then post race, we wait for everyone to finish. And then we go ahead and we have, you know, some fun activities for a uh, family to participate in for the kids. There's some small bites. And um, it's just really fun. There's also some awards at the end too, which is nice. That's great. And I trust that you've paid extra for good weather that day, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes, we have. Rain or shine, Erin, rain or shine. That's right. So, so Stacia, or I'm sorry, Rachel, um, what, about, what about if I'm coming by myself? Um, you know, maybe I have somebody who I'm, I'm there for um, or with in spirit. Um, am, am I gonna feel alone? <laughs> Not at all. Please, not at all. Um, if you are on your own out there and you want to come, please come. I'll be waiting for you. Stacia will be waiting for you. There 100%. is a tent, um, a Rawl Foundation tent, and I would just recommend that that person goes to the tent and they can feel free to join any of our teams and we will welcome you with open arms. Great. And you know what? It's there's a lot going on that day, but we if we could meet and talk to every single one of you, we 100% would. So if you are really interested in talking to us because we're very exciting, um, please do come to that tent because we'd love to meet you. And that's what we're all about is that family feel. And we'd love to connect with you and get to know you and um, hear your story and help in any way that we can. Absolutely. And, and we want to address to um, CDC guidelines and, yeah. and everything that's going on to, to let folks know that we will be following the latest guidelines at, at the time. Um, we will have people with masks. Um, you know, if, if that's where you choose to be, we'll have sanitizing stations, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there is plenty of ways to participate in person while also being mindful and distancing and um, being safe. You know, at the end of the day, um, safety is, is our utmost concern. 100%. So we're gonna, we're gonna do what we can. Absolutely. Great. Well, any parting words today? Well, Erin, I, I, I know I speak for Stacia and everyone on the staff that we are so grateful for you. And I can't imagine you not being part of the Ralph, the Ralph family. I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you do for us. And I know that your heart is in it and I know that you have connections. So you understand why we put in the work that we do. And I just wanna thank you for being a part of that. 
Thank you. That that means a lot, and it's truly my pleasure um, to to do this. I love working with you and and the team and and meeting the families, um, telling story, telling their stories, and it's it's a truly an honor. Thank you, Erin. Thank well, you. Thank you both. We look forward to seeing you in person yes, on Saturday, and uh, for the rest of you, we look forward to seeing you online. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you for indulging us uh, on that. And thanks again to Stacia and Rach. Uh, I'm consistently in awe of your dedication and your ability to impact so many di different people's lives every day, every day. So thank you for, for what you're doing. And speaking of impact uh, and ability, whether you're running or walking this weekend, a warm up is always a good idea. So thankfully, our friends at Shred 415 prepared a video of some great ways to get ready, no matter what your ability level is. Hi, everybody. It's Bonnie and Tracy with Shred 415, and we are super excited to kick off the dash today for Wellness Wednesday. So this Saturday, um, we want to do a little warm up, no matter where you are in life, whether you're in treatment, post-surgery, or you're an active athlete, we just wanted to give you a few stretches and a warm up to get you ready for our 5K dash on Saturday. So great, so we're gonna start off with a few exercises because we don't want you to just go out and start running without warming your body up. So first exercise is some jumping jacks. We're gonna do this for 30 seconds. Either you tap out. So again, if you're not jumping today, we're just gonna tap it out. We've got 30 seconds. You can either bring your arms in front, over your head, and we're just gonna get that heart rate up because we don't wanna start running without warming that body up. We've got 10 seconds. Nice work, everyone. Keep going. Good, we've got five and four and three, two and one. Second exercise, we're just gonna start with those knees up. So again, whether you're jumping or you're just doing a little bit more of a moderate modification here, or doing a little bit more moderate, we're just gonna do this. And so if you wanna bring it up a little bit, you can bring those knees up. So if you're more than an, more of an athlete, then just get those knees up. If not, you're here with us right here. God, getting those hip flexors warmed up. Nice work. Let's do about 10 more seconds of this. We've got five, four, three, two, and one. Third exercise here, just butt kickers. So we're just gonna hinge forward, getting those heels to those booties. So when you think about running, you wanna snap those heels to those booties. So just warming it up. If you wanna pick it up a little bit, you're right here. You can move those arms, get those arms into it as well. Woo! So again, modification, just drive those heels up. Nice job. 10 seconds here. Woo, getting my heart rate up. Are you feeling this? I'm feeling it, thanks five, team. Four, three, two, and one. Let's bring some lunges into this. So we're just gonna step back and we're gonna twist to the bent knee side, step it forward, alternate, good. So just reverse lunges. If you wanna bring those hands up, you can start driving those hands up, good. Woo, nice job. Let's just do two more on each side. So one more time, excellent. Okay, let's stand it tall. We're gonna squat it down. So we squat and then we're gonna go a hip opener. So we're gonna open that hip. Good, so just start opening the hips. Nice, squat it down. And again, if you don't wanna squat all the way down, just do a slight bend in those knees and drive those hips up. Again, woo. Got about 10 more seconds here. Nice work. I'm feeling nice and warmed up, I know. love this. And then Bonnie's gonna bring us into a little bit more of stretching those runner's lunges, side to side. Let's do one more on each side. And then Bonnie will take it from here. Nice job. All right guys, one last exercise. We're gonna take those feet wide. You're gonna come over into a side lunge and come up onto your heel. Stretch out that hamstring. Good. So again, you can always slow this down. You can quicken it up, make it an active warm up, or take it slower. As T said, a warm up is so important, especially for this 5K we have on Saturday. We're super excited and we're wishing you guys all an awesome ride and rock. High fives. Woo! 
Thanks, Bonnie and Tracy, and thank you to the entire Shred 415 team. We can't wait to see you in motion on Saturday morning, and uh, we really appreciate the special offer that you are going to be giving to our participants. I believe we're putting a link in the, um, the chat now, and we'll definitely um, be able to, to send that out to everybody. So there you have it. A special thank you to to Zoe Kofkin, Stacia Hart, Rachel Scheinkopf, and the Shred 415 team. And thank you all for joining me tonight. I hope to see you all this weekend, whether in person or on social. You could find all of the day of programming details by clicking on the link in the chat. Registration and packet pickup open up about seven with programming opening and kicking off at about 840. And we've got lots of fun, as Stacia and Rachel said, we've got lots of fun, lots of goodies planned for throughout the race, during the race, um, after the race. So bring your best uh, purple, get your best costumes going. Um, we have prizes and awards for all of that as well. I I'm gonna take a moment and go rogue for a second. Uh, Dash would not be happening without the tireless efforts of the entire Rolf team and, and volunteers. I need to give a shout out to Katie Foster, Rolf's Director of Programming, who is the driving force behind Dash. And to Dan Prin, Rolf's Digital Marketing Specialist, who is um, the master of the videos and social media efforts. To Angela Horn, Paula Cotras, and Rolf's board, and all of the volunteers, thank you so much for everything you're doing, not just for Dash, but day in and day out, you're making a huge impact in the lives of so many people. And I, I think everybody goes through life and, and doesn't take the time to step back and see what you're doing. So I wanna take that moment to um, show you that. So thank you for, for doing that. Uh, for those joining us in Chicago on Saturday, uh, as we mentioned in the video, we will be following the CDC's latest guidelines. There's plenty of room for distancing. We expect that there will be people with masks, without masks. Sanitizing locations are going to be available throughout as well. Uh, safety is everything. So we, we've got you covered on that front. If you have any questions leading into the event, go ahead and email us at info at ralphfoundation.org. And on site Saturday, find the Rolf tent, find the, the staff and volunteers, um, and we're happy to help you out in any way that we can. Thanks again for joining us tonight. Keep an eye out for on social for details about next month's Wellness Wednesday. Don't forget, you could still register for Dash if you haven't done so already. I want to see you there. On behalf of everyone at the Ralph Pancreatic Fa Cancer Foundation, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope to see you this weekend. And until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and take good care. Good night.